Many would say you are the top scholar in the historical evidence for the resurrection of Jesus. And I want to know what sort of research you've been focusing on over the past decade or so. Past decade, uh, it's a silly way the story started, but I thought, I, I wrote my doctoral dissertation in 1976. I thought, you know, I'm letting these sources go by and I need to update my bibliography. So I started what was a very small effort to maybe get the hottest 100 or 200 works and update my bib and I kept going and going and going and it's become kind of a get all the major works from 1975 to the present in French, German, English and try to categorize them, see what's being done, what trends are out there and what's the state of resurrection research. Mm -hmm. So that's been my main research uh, project for years. And so when we're talking about uh, researching the sources, um, are these just just Christian scholars or, or what's going on here? Uh, well, the only thing I require is that they be academics in the field. Now, I, I defined critical scholars in my definition. Generally, I make exceptions because some guys deserve more than this. But for the most part, I think terminal degree, peer-reviewed publications, and they've done work in this field enough that they can be said, I, I don't want to say an insider, that's too small a group, but they can speak where scholarship is and not just go off one way or the other. I don't want them to preach a sermon, and I don't want them to say silly critical things on the other end that, that can't be you know, backed up. So I'm looking for scholarship on these issues. Who knows what they're talking about? But I don't care what their views are. I don't care how skeptical, liberal, moderate, or conservative they are. So this would include atheist scholars, agnostic Absolutely. scholars? Absolutely. Agnostics, Bart Ehrman, uh, any of those kind of guys. Now, what, what, what's interesting is that when we talk about the historical Jesus, there is something of a consensus on certain facts about Jesus and even about, uh, you know, after his death. Uh, what, are, what are some of the, the most important things that uh, scholars in general, regardless of their theological background, would agree on? Well, I use what I call a minimal facts methodology, and I emphasize it's a methodology. It's a way to go about parsing your verb, so to speak. It's not, it's not a, um, you know, what's right and what's wrong necessarily, but it's a basis from which to tell what that data, what those data are. And I would say, um, the 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 core. And I change the numbers because nobody only allows this small number of facts. Um, I would say Jesus died by crucifixion. Afterwards, his disciples, if you want me to stretch it out just a little bit, his disciples experienced despair, had a normal psychological reaction, my world's over, I've been doing this for three years, golly, what am I going to go back to? Thirdly, they had experiences which they believe were appearances of the risen Jesus. Fourthly, it turned their life upside down. Uh, to the point where they were willing to die for this message. Now, I'll stop right there real quickly, because a lot of people say, well, today we know people are willing to die for just about anything, and it could be an atheistic political. I mean, sure, people have died for communism, you know? Uh, and yes, I think that's the answer, but here's the difference. People die today for ideologies. Nobody knows Karl Marx. Nobody knows Muhammad. Nobody knows Jesus. They die for ideologies. And on the, on the resurrection, when you have the original apostles testimony here's the difference they are the only people in space and time history who can answer the question of most most likely what occurred with regard to Jesus after his death did you see him now I could die for the fact that Peter believed he saw the risen Jesus but I'd rather ask Peter than me so the difference is if they're willing to die for it, that says they're utterly convinced they saw the risen Jesus. Now, other things could have happened, but once you have these guys being totally sold out, which everyone concedes, now we have a basis from which to deal with the other data. Then I would say the Apostle Paul, who became a believer because he saw the risen Jesus, and I usually put James in there. Uh, let's say that James is a... And, and the last one, this all happened very, very early very early, so early that, uh, well, Bart Ehrman is just an example of many. He dates these events from our record, our reports, from one to two years after the cross, not 40 years later with the Gospel, or 60 with the Gospel of John, but one to two years after the cross. That's probably the most exciting 
research emphasis in the last few decades. We have we have the guys who claim to see them from very very early. And so w when we when we talk about uh, you, you've already said this, but I just want it for emphasis. When we talk about uh, scholars on their view that Jesus' apostles were convinced that he had appeared to them, that's not just the Christian view. That's that's the atheist, the agnostic, Absolutely. everyone. Absolutely. I don't know virtually anybody who's in my category, uh, terminal degree, peer-reviewed publication, studied the area, would be recognized as a name in this field who would deny it. So they would, uh, they, they they obviously wouldn't believe that the resurrection happened, but they're 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 focusing on historical facts that they have to agree, and then it's how do you explain them? Well, first of all, the majority view today. Now, here's how I just de define the line that I call conservatism, and you know, where's the where's the uh, dividing line? I'd say the dividing line is this: if you ask a Boltmanian, it's pretty old. I mean, you no, know, we're off Boltman. But if you ask Boltmanians. Is the resurrection an event that happened to Jesus, or is it an event that happened to the disciples? Oh, it's an event that happened to the disciples. You're on the left. Mm -hmm. If someone says it's an event that happened to a dead man named Jesus, and something happened to that man, especially if they add he's alive today as a result, that's the conservative side. So I, I, there's all kinds of views, because some might say he appeared in a non-bodily manner, but he really appeared, and some might say he appeared bodily. That's a predominant view today, he appeared bodily. So the question is, does something happen to Jesus? And I think the predominant view is not just that it happened to Jesus, but that it happened bodily. It's a bodily event. So yeah, I'll, the biggest number of people are going to pretty much concede it. Here's an example. E.P. Sanders, who calls himself a liberal, retired from Duke University, used to teach at Oxford. E.P. Sanders says he gives a list, like sort of like what I gave. A lot of scholars do this. He gave a list of things we can know for sure. And on that list is the following. I wouldn't even say this. It's so positive. I wouldn't even go this far. And he's a liberal. He says, after Jesus died, his disciples saw him again. And what form he appeared, I'm not entirely positive. But they said, after he died, he appeared again. Now, here's my point. He's not saying this is my view. He's saying this is what contemporary scholarship concedes. And he said that in the 90s. Well, the trends continue to be going there since the 90s. So... People might think, well, that's you. You teach to some conservative school, or you guys, you're a pastor in the church, or you're a whatever. No, it's the, that's the predominant view. So, and here's what's interesting. If, if we know what historical facts we have, can we say that anyone who sort of wants to be in line with what we know historically has to come up with a view that is at least consistent with all of these historical facts? At least consistent, but I would take a even stronger view and say that you'd want it to correspond to the data we have. Sure, you want it to hang together, but you really want it to correspond to the data we have, and we have a lot of data from this period. All right, now I want to go in a slightly different direction and mention briefly uh, Islam. I deal a lot with Muslims, and the Islamic view of Jesus is that he, he, he preached Islam, he went around preaching Islam, he was successful somewhat, he, he won followers who converted to Islam, uh, but then when there was a plot to kill him, he was taken to heaven, uh, there was a replacement, so God disguised someone to make him look like Jesus, this other person was then put on the cross, um, according according to, to some of our earliest records, uh, going back to uh, the tradition, how Muhammad explained what the Quran says about uh, this being some sort of illusion, um, Jesus' disciples were actually asked who's going to take his place. So the disciples were aware that this was a, a kind of uh, divine conspiracy where God is going to uh, trick people into believing that Jesus died. And so the disciples knew that this wasn't true. And then, of course, uh, later on, I have no idea how they would explain appearances of Jesus, but uh, how well would that, all Were of that... Were appearances in this view? Uh, th th there's nothing straightforward in the, Muslim, in the Muslim sources about Jesus appearing, so they would have to say, and I've heard, I've, heard a, I've heard a Muslim apologist say that maybe God allowed Jesus to appear to comfort his disciples because they were worried about him or something like Bodily that. Bodily or... How? Oh, bodily? Did he appear bodily? Uh, uh, just maybe some sort of vision or something like that, but how well do you think this would conf this would uh, cohere with the, th the uh, historical evidence? Well, first I want to make a comment, just so, I don't, so just so someone doesn't hear me and say, he just disagreed with his own rules. 
I am not a scholar in these areas. I feel like I have to say... You mean on Islam, right? Right, on Islam, because I have to... If I'm looking for those on my view, I wouldn't want somebody telling me... And I, Okay, so I'm not a scholar in this area, and I'm hearing this some of, a lot of this from you for the first time. I would say the historical backup for that kind of position is Zippo. Zero. Zero.